So now I want to see what I can do with this object track of my head. And for that I've prepared a digital double. It's a very crappy model, the topology is horrible, but it's really just meant for masking out my head and maybe make it possible to apply textures and shading and stuff on it. So um, that is the model that I'm going to use. I've already used it in another video and that is why you see this deformed head because I had adjusted that model to the particular track that I had. So um, I will try to reuse that in our example. So first of all, I will open up the track that we had created in the last chapter. So here's our track and still have this crappy mesh on my head. But now I want to import this head mesh. So I go to file and then not link because I want to be able to edit that mesh. So I choose append and then in the object track folder in the head chapter there is one folder named lib for library and inside of that library there is this head mesh and when I click on that then I can go inside of the object folder and here I use the head link append from library and that will import that model of this head here at the origin and um, well now of course we have to position that so I position the 3D cursor again here at the origin of this object or actually no let's set the origin no I will just select ah where are we so motion tracking then select the camera and this point should be the point where I want to position the 3D cursor so shift S3 so now the cursor is here and I can select that mesh shift S2 and that snaps it here so that it is aligned on that point. Now the rotation of course doesn't fit and even if I copy the rotation from this object I don't think it would work because the internal alignment is somewhat different so Control c copy rotation doesn't really do what I want. So in this case I really have to do that manually and the best thing to do is to do that from camera view so scale it up double R to go into trackball rotation mode and then try to really match the rotation and scale. So I guess it can be a little bit bigger and then also try to match the nose and the eyes and the rotation. So that can be a little bit tedious and really a lot of guesswork. And to be able to see that in motion, of course, I have to parent that to my overall tracking object. So I activate the last layer where I have this cube and shift select that and then hit control P. Set parent to object. And now it moves along with that cube. So I can disable that layer again. Zero to look through the camera. And now that follows but still it doesn't really fit so I try to make that happen R twice and then adjust it from different camera angles and then hopefully I can approximate the scale and rotation of this mesh to my head. I also really change the topology or at least the the mesh. So I think my forehead here I can also hide that. My forehead should be I guess um, a little bit more here. So I activate proportional editing. Then with the mouse wheel, we can adjust the offset. And of course, then also it's important to check from different perspectives. And yeah, uh, this is really also quite a bit of work. So I will finish that and after that, we'll see what we can do with this model.
Okay, so that looks pretty solid, I would say. Um, of course, the head now is a little bit deformed, but the only thing that we really need is to have the head covering my face good enough. And I think that is the case. If you really want to have it perfect, then eventually you can um, walk against that with shape keys. But I think for this test, eventually that might be good enough. Okay, so what I want to do is to just put some glasses on. At first I thought it would be cool to have some fancy tech stuff on my brain that does anything. So Kjartan, who is currently here at the Blender Institute where I'm recording, who's also part of the Mango Open Movie team, he modeled a nice tech brain that I would put on, but I couldn't get it to work uh, with proper shading. Um, so for this test, I think I just want to put on some glasses because that will also show some interesting challenges. For example, getting proper reflections and transparency. So that will be interesting in terms of compositing and rendering, but maybe not so much in terms of fancy effects. So first I save that as a new version, so F2. And you can see I already have quite a bit of versions. So with the plus sign, I can incrementally add a new number. So um, had nine, save as Blender file, and now I open up the glasses that I have downloaded from blendswap.com. They are also in the library, so eyeglasses, open Blender file, and I've already adjusted them because originally these, whatever they are called, they were a little bit closer together. So I've adjusted that, but um, they are really just some simple glasses. And I've grouped them in a group named glasses, so I want to import that. So I go back to my head, file, link, and then here in the library, eyeglasses, group, glasses. Link append from library, and they are here at the 3D cursor. Um, and in this case, we can copy the rotation from the head. So with that selected, shift select the head, then with the add-on, I think I've already covered that, but just very quickly. So the add-on is copy attributes menu. You can call that with control C. So copy rotation from the active to the selected and now just R, Z, Z, 180 to rotate that. And now we can position that a little bit better, also scale it down. So put it here on the nose. And I believe we have to scale it up a little bit more or make it local so that we can adjust the mesh, which would also be probably an option that we could do or adjust the original file. That is, of course, also something that you can always do. So I just rotate and adjust it until it fits to my head. Okay, something like that. It looks probably horrible, but now with that selected, shift select the head mesh and then control P to make parent, set parent to object, and now these glasses will follow my head. Oh, there's a little problem. Um, maybe oh, let's just cheat and drag in this face. Okay. All right, so why do we need the head? Well, if I put the head on the background layer, because in this case, the head is just for getting shadows. So M move to layer 11. And if you just render that like this, then you will only have the glasses. And I forgot to also put this to the junk layer here. Um, so if you only render that, then you only have the glasses. And if I go to the compositor, and put this on top of my head on the footage. So Shift A, movie clip, Shift A, add scale, set it to relative, Control Shift click to add the viewer node, drag this on top of that, and then Shift A, color, alpha over, um, like that, enable back, drop, convert pre multiply. Okay, so the problem here is, of course, that we can see through that. So the mesh is or the one use of that head mesh will be to mask out my ear, or not the ear, but the area of the ear of the glasses, and of course also to receive shadows and reflections. So that is not enough. And first of all, I want to add some ambient occlusion. So 
add ambient occlusion, set it to multiply, then a little bit of environment lighting, set this to 0.3, ray trace, maybe a distance of 1 or 2, set it to adaptive QMC because it renders a little bit faster, and then let's go to the render layers. So I think that this now should all be pretty easy so far. So let's also enable layer 11 for the head mesh. Then this will be the foreground or just in short FG. Then another layer will be the background or BG. So FG will be layer one with the glasses. And on the glasses, I need the vector pass. And on the background, that will only render this layer and it will include the ambient occlusion and eventually some shadows. We'll just enable that. We don't have any shadows yet, I think, because we... Do we even have a lamp? No. Okay, let me just quickly add a lamp. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do with this lighting. Maybe an area light. Coming from the direction of the window. Then make it a little bit bigger, like three. And the distance, lower that, also make it kind of yellowish. Let's see what that does. M, move to layer 1 and 11. Render again. Okay, so now you see what happens. And also I forgot something. And of course, here on the foreground layer, we have to enable the background as mask layer. That is important. So enable that, render image. Okay, so that is now masked out. And even though there are some pixels that are not correct, I think it works good enough. And I mean, that looks ridiculous, but we will fix that. So first we have the movie clip and then the render layers will be the background and here we have the ambient occlusion. That looks already quite nice, but of course just as before we have to prepare that by inverting the um, alpha channel and adding the alpha channel to the ambient occlusion. And it would be so nice if that would be somehow automatic, but well that's just the way it is. So. There we've got that, and we can multiply that on top of the movie clip. All right, it works more or less. There is something wrong with the eyes, of course, but other than that, it looks okay. The one problem that we have here is that we also have the ambient occlusion of the head mesh. So something that would be nice to be able to avoid would be self-shadowing or self-made ambient occlusion, so to say. So it would be nice if only the objects would cast ambient occlusion, but that the object itself doesn't, well, produce this contact shadow of itself. But that is something that we cannot do in Blender internal, so eventually that might be something that you might be able to do with cycles. But for now, um, as a test, it is good enough. So um, now we've got this glasses here on my face. And because the glasses have a material that is mirroring and reflecting, especially reflecting, we also see the mesh behind that. And that looks weird, of course, but it is a good thing that that is the case, because that allows us to do some compositing with my face behind it. Because, of course, we could just say the glasses are transparent. But the realism comes from this index of refraction of the glasses material so that the light that is going through the glasses is bent, just like with the lens distortion on our lenses of the camera. So we have some distortion behind the glasses and that is of course very interesting to have. But to have proper reflections we have to see my face behind that, of course. And for that, we will project the footage onto the mesh. So just like as in the other chapter, we will use the UV project modifier. So let's go to the 3D viewport. And then first let's create one UV map. So select everything, U, unwrap. It doesn't have to be any special, just so that we have the map. Then next I want to try something and that is to use the UV project modifier behind Subsurf. Because recently that didn't work yet because Blender has switched to a new mesh system. 
Um, so if you are using Blender 2.62, then it will work. But with Blender 2.63 or the current development version, then eventually there might be a problem, but I think it should be fixed. Anyway, so subsurf and then UV project modifier. Choose the camera as the projector, then also set this to UV map and the scale is 1920 divided by 1088. So I think that's 1.765. Yeah, 1.765, that should be easy to remember. Uh, so that is the pixel or the image aspect ratio. And now let's also create a material. So add new and it should be shadeless. Maybe give it a name. So it is the projection like that. Then it needs to have a texture. New image, open the movie. That of course is in the footage folder. So good object tracking, head track. That one is our movie. And then set it to match movie length, auto refresh. Also set the coordinates to UV, choose the UV map. And if everything works, then it's all fine. So let's render that and see what happens. Seems not to work. So let's see what happens if I apply the subsurf modifier. Ah, see, that works. So apparently the subsurf modifier still doesn't work behind the UV project or in front of the UV project modifier. So in this case, I have applied it so that we have enough faces for the UV project modifier to work. Ideally, of course, you could just say uh, subsurf and after that use the UV project modifier. That should work, but currently applying that makes everything work better. Now, one thing, of course, and that is we still have this gray background. So let me just quickly go here to the shading panel and set this to pre-multiplied. Now, render again. And magically, now we have the reflection inside of these glasses. So that works, but unfortunately that also messes up our ambient occlusion thing. And that is because the background layer currently just renders this object, this head, with the material that I have set to shadeless. So just like before, I create a new one, call that shadow. I do not change anything on that will just be something that will receive the shadow. Also don't apply that to any faces. So in the render layer of the background layer, I override the material of that layer. So that will now be the shadow. Now let's try again. So there we've got my eyes inside of the refractive glass. And also we still have the ambient occlusion. And that is, of course, very nice. Now, one thing that currently doesn't really work is that in theory, we would also have ambient occlusion here in my eyes, just a little bit, but because the foreground layer is alpha overing, that doesn't really work. So here, inside of the reflection, we only see the projected texture, but not the shading. But I think that still works kind of okay. Maybe the material is not ideal, so I think that this is a little bit too milky. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's fine. It's good enough. Well, the thing that really bothers me is that we here have some ambient occlusion on my ear. So that is something that I want to mask out. So currently we see everything of the ambient occlusion. So even my mouth, the nose, the ears receive ambient occlusion from the mesh itself, but not just from the glasses. And that is something where we now can cheat a little bit. So first of all, the eyes are totally wrong, of course. And also here, even though it looks okay, it won't be really correct because the eyes in the mesh are open. So what's happening is that you are now projecting through these open eyes onto the back of the mesh and even though it looks correct here, I think it will produce some errors later. So first of all, to be able to cheat a little bit better, I want to close the eyes. And I will do that in a very crappy way. So 
that will be horrible modeling. So I select the inner loop and then press Control numpad plus. That will increase the selection like this. Then I will just erase that. I'll try to get all of these. And then X, delete vertices. And then S to scale it down, E to extrude, S to scale it down further, S scale, S scale, and then Alt M, merge at center. And then maybe Control Numpad Plus. Eventually we can smooth that a little bit. So, well, first of course we do need smooth shading, so I can enable that. But also, where is Smooth Vertex here? Deform in the tool shelf. Maybe also select this, smooth it. Looks horrible, of course, but for the projection it will make things a little bit better. Now the same thing for the left eye. So control numpad plus, increase that, then select this, erase it, and make this a little bit smaller. E extrude, S scale it down, E extrude, S scale it down, E extrude, S scale it down, and so on. E extrude, S scale it down, Alt M merge at center. Then control numpad plus again, grow the selection set it to smooth shading and also in deform smooth vertex like that and if i render that let's see what happens so because the image is still projected it will work even though without unwrapping again but here in the empty occlusion that now looks a little bit better even though it will be not visible because here we are putting this in front of that. So behind that you wouldn't have seen it anyway. And yeah, so now what I want to do is to get rid of this ambient occlusion in the ears. And to do that, as mentioned before, we can cheat in different ways. So the one way to cheat would be to just cut off the ears on a second mesh because we do need the ears to mask out the glasses and also for the projection so that we have something in the reflection or the refraction in the glasses. The other way would be to use, for example, vertex painting or maybe another texture. So maybe let's use a texture and with a texture I a white color where I want to apply the ambient occlusion. And in order to be able to do that I have to create a new UV map because currently we are using the one UV map that we have for the projection and the UV project modifier. So first of all I go to the object data and create a new UV map. So first of all let's call that projection or project and then create a new one and this one will be the mask and when the mask is active I go to edit mode and press U and then unwrap. And because I had modeled this a while ago and already assigned some seams, these red lines, the UV map also unwraps more or less decently. At least it's good enough. So. Here I will just click on new to create a new black image, 1k that is big enough, untitled maybe could be changed to mask, then click on ok. That is our mask that we will now be able to paint on. So here in the 3D viewport I go to texture painting. Now it's all black which is a good sign because that means that here on the mask the image is applied so now we can paint on that. So let's go to texture paint mode and then make sure that you have the regular brush selected and then change the color to white and now I would like to be able to really see where I'm drawing because currently everything is black so I cannot see that and one way to do that would be to go to the object properties and then in display also enable the wireframe now we can see where we are painting if we just now apply a brush stroke here like that. So 
this is the area where I suppose the ambient occlusion or the shadow of the frame of that glasses would be. And that will also be here. So I only want to have the ambient occlusion where really the glasses are visible. So that would be in this area. So I'm just painting here the white color onto this area like that. I think here it doesn't need to be. But that will make sure that we don't get the self-shadowing that we otherwise would get from the ambient occlusion. So now let's also save that image as mask. And for that I've created a texture folder called text and I already saved one version of that. So just call it mask, save as image. And then we need to create a new render layer. It also would be nice to be able to use the UV node so that we don't even have to create a render layer for that, or uh, at least a material. But since we are using multiple UV maps, that currently there seems to be kind of a problem. And maybe I can show you what I mean. So in the render layers of the background, I also enable the UV pass. And now I render that. So far that looks okay. And now in the nodes, you can see that here on the background render layer node, we have this UV output. And we can use that to feed that into the map UV node. And this will allow us to use any image as input, for example, the mask, put that in here, and then have that mapped automatically by the UV pass. But something doesn't seem to work, and I guess that this is because we are using multiple layers. I suspect that this seems to be some kind of problem. So instead of doing that, I will just create a new material so that will be the mask and the mask will also be shadeless. It doesn't need to be traceable. So I will turn that off. And of course we need a texture. So add image mask, set it to UV, choose the correct map, which is the mask map. And then use that as a material override. Or actually, no, now we need a new render layer because we are already overriding the background. So we need a new render layer, mask, that is also only rendering this layer, but it will be overridden by the mask material. Okay, render that. Then in the nodes, create a new render layer, set it to mask, so there we go, that looks correct. And we can now use that as the factor input for the multiplication because currently there is still the ambient occlusion and in the meantime I had already inserted the color ramp. Maybe let me delete that. So that is the ambient occlusion as it comes out of the render layer background. And in order to avoid this shadowing on the ears and on my mouth, I want to use the factor input here so that the multiplication is only applied or that this render layer is only applied where you have white color, so not on the ears. So if I now just drag in this image output of the render layer named mask inside of the factor, now that is gone and we only have the shadowing where we want it to be. All right, so that works nice. And next thing would be maybe to try to get rid of these black spots. Removing these black markers can be really tricky, especially in noisy and unevenly lit footage like this. But well, with a little bit of work, then you can get at least a decent result that might not be perfect, but at least you will get rid of some of these points. Of course, the easiest way would be to just put something on my head, for example, a hat or a robot brain or cables or just cutting a piece off of my head that might be also something that might be interesting. But well, just getting rid of these markers can be tricky if you still want to see the skin. And of course, one way would be to paint it out. For example, you could paint a mask or just paint one frame and then project that frame onto the rest of the footage. But because I'm moving my head and the lighting changes, 
here for example like that. So that can be one situation where painting a mask might not be ideal. Um, so the other thing that you can do is to to blur everything because the blur if you blur everything so that the black spot will not be visible anymore then at least you will get at least a similar lighting even though it will be blurred and you lose the grain and the detail. Another thing would be to just offset the point so you could paint a mask or create a mask by using a mesh or a Bezier circle and then offsetting the input for that just a few pixels so that you can get um, well a mask that just copies the pixel from here. But that will be a little bit tedious to do so I think the easiest way uh, is to just blur everything until you get rid of these black spots. Now blurring that starts well with the Gaussian blur or fast Gaussian. So shift A, add filter blur. And then if you blur everything, that looks also interesting. Now, if you set this to fast Gaussian and maybe use a relative blur, like with, for example, 2%, then here you cannot see these black areas anymore. Of course, you also lose a lot of detail, but at least the black points will be gone. But because the blur is now rather big, you will also get some color bleeding, for example, from this yellow area into the skin tones, but at least in the forehead will work pretty good. Maybe you can also try to lower the amount of blur until you reach a point where it works. Not nine, but 1.8. Yeah, still the black markers are gone here maybe you can see that. Anyway, you can just try. Now, of course, blurring everything doesn't do anything good for you because you still want to have the detail of the rest of the face. So you have to mask out these points. Now, one way to do that would be to try to use a Luma mask, but in this case, that will definitely not work because there are much darker areas, for example, here on my eyes. So that would then be also blurred. So that will not work. So we have to isolate these black spots and one, I think, pretty straightforward way to that would be to just apply a Bezier circle here. So you could here bring the cursor to that marker, hit Shift S3, then cursor to select it, and then here on that point add Bezier circle. Like that, then rotate it, scale it down, and then of course the most important thing is to make it solid. So go to the object data and then create a 2D shape from that, like this, then scale it down, maybe do that in wireframe. And of course you should see the background image for that. So add image, camera, movie clip, active camera clip, like so. And now scale it down, maybe like double the size of the point, something like this, so that you have enough pixels that can be blurred from the outside to the inside, so to say. Then, of course, since it is a mask, you also have to separate that from the other stuff. So press M, move to layer, and then maybe use layer 12. This one, then enable that, render it. And now you have an even darker point, but that is because the uh, material is affecting the ambient occlusion. So if I have a look in my ambient occlusion pass, then here you can see we have that black point. So before that works, we have to go to the material, add a new material, name that mask, and make it shadeless. And the most important thing is here to go to the options and then uncheck traceable so that it will be invisible to the ambient occlusion like that. So that is now invisible. Then, of course, that is something that I forgot to do, which is embarrassing, but anyway, you have to do that. So, of course, you have to create a new render layer for that. Name that mask, set it to just layer 12, and then render, and then you will have the mask available. So, Shift A, add render layer, set this to mask. Now you have that white point in the alpha layer, and now we can use that to limit the effect of the blur. And to do that, we'll just use a simple mix node. So Shift A, add color mix. Then 
our original image will go into the first input. Then we are putting the blur on top of that, like so. But then we will limit the effect of the blur just to this white point in the alpha layer, like so. That dark point is now gone. But since the edges of that circle are still rather sharp, you would be able to see that here. So if I zoom in here, I guess that you can see this idea of a brighter and sharp edged point. So to get rid of that, we can just copy the blur, drag that on top of this. But of course, we also have to make the radius a bit smaller. So 0.5 for example, and by using the relative setting, then you can be sure that by rendering at a bigger dimension later on 100% that the ratio between blur and pixels still fits. So blur that. And now the edges here are invisible. So we now have masked out this black spot. So in this case, that was not so very complicated, but doing that for all of these can be a little bit tedious. And since I'm moving my head in this shot, it will also be not perfect. But I think, well, with a little bit of work, you can get it to work. So let's just continue by duplicating this. And one thing I forgot, of course, we have to parent that to the head. So with just that marker selected, I parent that to the head with control P, set parent to object. So now it moves with it. And now we can just duplicate that. So from camera view, Alt D to duplicate that as an instance, just in case I want to change material or anything. So Alt D and because we are just duplicating, the parenting will still work. So we can just put that here and here and here and here. But of course, just doing that from this view will not match the actual position of the uh, 3D markers. So now I have to select each of these markers, hit Shift S3, then select the point, Shift S2 and so on. Then also rotate and make sure that the the mask is not going through the mesh. So R twice to go into trackball rotation mode. And then also maybe from local orientation, move it so that it really is on top of the surface of the skin. Okay, so that can take a while. But after that, maybe we can try for these on the forehead. So rendering and then the point on the forehead should be gone. Even though here on my nose, that is a little bit too bright eventually because it is also blurring from some pixels that are near this, let's call it specularity on my nose. So in that case, we would have to mask that with an object ID pass and then color correct that which also is a little bit tedious, but uh, it will help to get rid of this weird bright point. So let me quickly do that. We also position that a little bit better. Okay, like this, these ones I will take care of later. So we've got these markers here on the mesh, and now I go to the object data and give them a pass index. So here in relations, pass index one, for this one. And then to be able to separate it, this one gets pass index two. And each of these that you want to color correct separately, you would have to assign an object ID pass that is different from the others. So I just show you with these two, go to the render layer, enable the object index pass for the mask layer, render that, and still we have the blur and we have this bright spot on the forehead. It works really well, but here it's, well, it's kind of obvious that something's going on. So to color correct that separately, we can get the object index from the mask, go to converter, choose ID mask, then bring the index object pass in here 
set it to index one and that will just show you this one and to get rid of these harsh edges you can also enable smooth mask like that and that can now be used to color correct the output from our masked thing here so shift a rgb curves because that is just the easiest way to quickly color correct something and then bring the mask index into the factor input like so and now by darkening that that's a little bit too much but just slightly darkening that you can get rid of this bright spot so just very careful maybe also make it redder and even darker like that so that is now mostly gone again before after before after so that is how you can separately color correct these masks for the markers so again you can shift d bring that in here then sh control shift d duplicate this one because it will keep the connection to the index object now switch it to id mask 2 bring that in here and now that will color correct pass index 2 so here and there now we are working in this area that doesn't need to be so dark maybe like that and so on so in theory you could uh, create masks and rgb curves for every one of these points and if you really want to make it perfect then you would also have to animate that during the whole shot which of course is not ideal so but in the meantime i have added a few more of these marker points mask thingies and try to adjust them so that they mostly fit to their uh, corresponding marker and rendering that looks like this so most of these are gone especially these on my forehead well here on my ears there are some that are really poorly done also here on the nose you can still see that there are some weird things going on but then again it could also be reflection or dirt or skin problems or anything like that so if this would be a quick shot i guess you could get away with that um, but well that is the general idea of getting rid of these marker points by blurring them all right um, then this is the composite so here i have only created four masks or four special color corrections for these points then we've got the mask for the ambient occlusion right here so that looks like this then we've got well the ambient occlusion then there is the glasses on top of that a little bit of color correction brightening in that then here i've also got another mask so i've created an object index just for the glasses so that i'm able to only color correct the frame of the glasses but without affecting the well the glasses but just the frame uh, so that's it and now to render that we have to make sure one thing and that is to set the correct frame rate and this is something that we didn't if i remember correctly that we didn't really do in the previous examples but especially if you have a texture as movie input then it is really necessary that you set the correct frame rate because otherwise the movie texture that is projected onto the head mesh this one this movie would use the frame rate of the movie file which is 25 but if you then render with 25 frames per second um, that would not match anymore so in that case either you just convert the movie to image sequence before which would be the safest and easiest way or you set the correct frame rate here in the render panel in the dimensions so with that i want to render that and then see how that looks like and I would say that even though we can still see that there are some problems and that there are some black areas, that it still looks okay. I mean, if you don't know that there is something going on, then maybe you would not be able to notice that there are some darker areas, that there are some brighter areas on my nose. I mean, after all, my skin is also not the best, so who knows? I mean, 
just the fact that these really dark spots are gone is I think good enough that we can get away with that. And especially here the reflection in the glasses, I would say it helps to sell this as somehow realistic. It's not perfect, but well, it does the trick. So if you want to buy new glasses and first want to test how they look, then you can use this method to try them out.